Petro with Rick Rolling Your Neighbors. Please welcome Dan. All right. All right thank you very much. We're going to go and get started. This is Rick Rolling Your Neighbors with Google Chromecast. I'm Dan, or uh, Alt F4. Or my friends like to call me Alt. So let's get going. So um, the Chromecast, in case you're not familiar with the Chromecast is, it's uh, this little guy. It's a handy little device. Um, it costs like $35. It's like super popular and hard to get sometimes, I think. Um, I, was a, I was able to get one of the like second shipments of these things. Um, it's a little wireless device, plays video to your TV. Um, it has uh, only two ports. It's got HDMI and USB, and the USB is only for power. Um, so uh, you're able to play stuff like Netflix and YouTube and things like that. Um, it's supposed to be really like cheap and easy, and I got one because it was exactly that. Um, but also because I really wanted to rickroll my neighbors with this thing. And so I'm going to kind of walk you guys through um, exactly how um, I found out how to, way to do that. So um, I'll walk you through sort of the story about how this came to be. So um, a couple of years ago, I was watching um, a movie. I was watching Iron Man 2. And uh, this particular scene came in. I don't think there's any way for me to plug in. So I'm just going to have to point the microphone like into my speaker. I was watching this scene. Hold on my second bike. I need him. Time for a little transparency. Yeah, Tony Stark just like busts out with this like cell phone looking thing, points it at a screen, and just hijacks it. And it starts playing video like in the middle of a congressional conference or a congressional hearing or something, right? And if you look, you totally can't see this, but if you look really closely, it says like Stark Industries Terminal Hijack System. And he has a seashell, there's a, a, a shell, it's like it's, it's a Windows box. I don't know if that's his machine. Anyway. Um, so he wanted to get a whole shell on the box, but I'm not going to do that. We're just going to play video on the thing, right? And so if you're like me, you're standing in the theater or looking at home, like throwing popcorn at the screen going, come on, like, like the TV's not going to be hooked up to anything wireless. Like that would be an incredibly silly thing to do, right? Um, like you can't just point like your doohickey at it and start playing video at it. Um, and then the Chromecast came out. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Challenge accepted. Um, so the, the, the first challenge, unfortunately, is getting one of these things. Uh, because they're really cheap, I guess, and they sell out really fast. Um, so I wasn't able to get one for the longest time. And so in the interim, before like, I actually got one of the Chromecasts in the, the time that I really wanted to hack it, I started looking at um, some of the source code that's available online. So um, Dial is a protocol that's, I forget what it stands, it's like the discovery something and uh, and lookup. I don't even know what it stands for. It's the um, discovery protocol that um, was developed by Netflix and you and uh, Google collectively to do like discovery of the Chromecast. So you can just like press a button and have it discover the thing. And so the protocol is open and they have a reference implementation that's uh, up on their website. And it plays pretty fast and loose with some string copies and there's probably a zero day or two to be found there. Um, but that is like way too hard. That's like not the route that I wanted to go in. Um, so, yeah, you could probably go there, right? But for a reason that I'm going to describe um, in a little bit later, um, that actually wouldn't help us um, too much. And I forgot to press the start button, so this is going to be way off. Okay. The, all right, so, it's, so now I finally got my Chromecast. Um, and I start to figure out, I, I want to figure out exactly how this thing works. There's not a whole lot of information online about how actually it like, does setup and how it does discovery and how the thing even works. It just kind of like auto-magically works. Um, which, from a user's perspective, is like totally awesome, and it really is actually amazingly easy to set up. Um, but then, it usually means it's like amazingly insecure. So I really wanted to figure out exactly what that is. So you open the box, and this is actually the inside of the box. If you can't quite see that, it has three steps. It has step one, plug it in. Okay. Step two, switch input, like on your TV, to like put it to HDMI. And step three, set it up. Like okay, set it. Like it reminded me a little bit of this picture. <laughs> Which is, if you can't read that right, step one, draw some circles. Step two, draw the rest of the fucking owl. <laughs> so that doesn't really help me at all, right? It, it works. Like, you can go to their little website thing, and there's some, like, JavaScript magic that talks out to your Chromecast, but, like, it doesn't really tell you at all what's going on behind the scenes. Um, so I tried to do uh, a little bit of research on that to figure out exactly what happens. So. Uh, the Chromecast is, as I said, a, a simple device. It only has two hardware um, inputs. It has, or two hardware ports. It has the HDMI, which is output, so you plug it directly into your TV. And then it has um, a single hardware reset button, and then the USB, which is only used for power. I'm not even sure if the data lines are hooked up, actually. Um, and then the hardware it has one hardware reset button, so there's not like input to be had there necessarily. Um, so the question is, how do you actually set the thing up? Right, you have to connect to your Wi-Fi. 
So you have to tell it your SSID and you have to tell it your password. So like, how does that, how do you actually do that, right? There's not like a USB port where you like type it in or something. It doesn't type it, uh, plug in via USB or anything like that. So what happens is the first time you set it up, the first time you plug it in, it creates its own Wi-Fi network. It makes its own SSID acting as an access point, right? You connect to it and then you go to like the Google like setup web page and it does some JavaScript magic and then you can set it up from there. So that way you talk to the Chromecast. So you talk to the Chromecast over Wi-Fi with it acting as the access point. And so you as the, you have to have a, um, a wireless device like a laptop or something or a phone that you can connect to it um, that way. So the setup process kind of looks like this. You have your TV, um, which is gonna be there in the uh, bottom right hand corner. You have your, um, uh, your Chromecast, which you plug directly into the TV. Um, you have your user slash victim and you have your um, uh, Wi-Fi access points. This is your home wireless access point, right? With some strong, unbreakable uh, uh, encryption key, right? So you're, this isn't gonna be some talk about like, well, you just break the person's like web key, LOL. Like that's not like what we're gonna be doing here, right? So you're gonna talk out to the internet, to your lolcats. So that's, this is the setup like when you first get, um, uh, this is how things look when you first like plug in your um, Chromecast. So, what's going to happen is the Chromecast is going to throw up its, its SSID, since it's going to be an access point. It's going to be called Chromecast. So you as the victim, or you as the user, will then disconnect from your wireless access point and connect to it. Then you go through some um, web, um, uh, web interface and you can configure the Chromecast to tell it uh, your SSID and your password, and then you can have it connect to your Wi-Fi access point, and then now you're both connected to the lolcats. Now you can stream your lolcats directly to your TV. Okay, so um, that's not so bad. There's a couple of things in here that are maybe not so great, which is that like this is gonna be an insecure um, uh, access point, and you're gonna be telling it your um, uh, Wi-Fi password over Wi-Fi insecurely, so maybe that's not so great, but you know, whatever. We're gonna kind of ignore that for the moment. Um, so this is a one-time insecure setup. So the, I actually don't mind this necessarily. It's kind of like SSH where you have a one-time insecure setup. You do that once, you say, all oh, right, it's fine. We do that. And then after that, it should be a secure usage. So we could have a talk here about how you could have um, a race condition to connect to the Chromecast. So you plug the Chromecast in and there's an attacker next door, right? And during this window of time, anybody can just connect to your Chromecast Wi-Fi network, right? Have it. Uh, configure uh, the Chromecast at, uh, to connect to him, to the attacker, and have him connect out to Rigroll, and then play video on your TV, right? So the only problem with uh, this attack is that it's lame. It's really lame because this is not really a flaw per se, right? This is kind of how the protocol's meant to behave. This is how everything was supposed to be done. It's a, like if you went to a conference and said, hey guys, I found out uh, how to break SSH, like you just man in the middle, like the first connection, like, okay, everybody knows that. That's in the security model, right? That's not a flaw. So the uh, security model after you have set everything up is gonna look like this. You have your um, Wi-Fi um, like perimeter, so the blue kind of area represents the encrypted perimeter of your Wi-Fi network. And so if an attacker tries to um, send Rickroll out to the Chromecast, or tries to connect out to the Chromecast, there'd be nothing there and it bounces away. That's the best animation I could come up with for that. Pew, 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 it makes pew, pew noises actually. Um, so that's how everything's supposed to work. And then that, that's kind of the security model for the Chromecast. And I actually really like that. I think that, that works pretty well. It lets you have a really easy setup. You do it really insecurely one time and then you're, you're good to go. Okay, so I thought, I don't know, maybe there's not really a whole lot to be found here. And then I read the FAQ for the Chromecast and I saw this question. Can I take the Chromecast with me to use when I travel? And this is in the like, actual official FAQ. I thought, really? And the answer was yes. The Chromecast was built with portability in mind. You can bring it with you when you travel. But keep in mind that you will need Wi-Fi access to, use, uh, to set up and use the Chromecast. Well, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Like, you're supposed to take it when you travel. And that, made, that kind of got my, my gears kind of turning. Like, well, if you're going to set it up, you can only set it up on the, on the Wi-Fi. It's one-time insecure setup which means that the one-time insecure setup may, might not be so one-time after all. So wait a sec, right? So you picture this, right? You're on vacation, right? You take the Chromecast with you, 
and you want to plug it into your like friend's uh, TV or maybe like the hotel TV, right? You hook it up to the wireless, you can play some lolcats on the wireless. So how does the Chromecast know that you're on travel? How does it, you have to reconfigure it, right? You have to tell it the new SSID and the new password over the Wi-Fi. So it has to put up its one-time insecure Wi-Fi uh, network. So how does it know whether you're on travel or not? Whether it can connect to your home Wi-Fi. So it keeps the connection. It stores whether your old network is, it's, it stores the old SSID of the, like, your home network. And if it can't connect to it, then it figures you must be on travel. And so it'll put up its one-time insecure, uh, one insecure network thing, right? So the gears are starting to see people starting to get this right away, right? How this is going to happen. So suppose you're on vacation. You have your Chromecast, right? It's going to go out and try to find your home network. If it doesn't find it, it puts up the uh, SSID, the uh, insecure setup thing, the way you can try to connect to it. So then your user says, hey, there it is. And then you can connect out to your network. And the attacker... Oh, this is the attack. Whoops. Okay. So, how does the attack work? I'm, I, I was totally missing my step. Okay. The vacation. Actually, let me go through vacation. Okay. So, this is how the attack works. So, the attack from start to finish works like this. You, as the attacker, appear. You send out a deauthenticate packet, or maybe more than one, out to the Chromecast itself, right? And so, this you can. The de in case you're not familiar with Wi-Fi, um, deauthenticate packets are sent out in plain text over Wi-Fi, which is kind of a silly thing, but whatever, right? So you can just DOS any individual node on any um, Wi-Fi network, um, which usually isn't such a big deal because they just go ahead and reconnect. Um, but instead, the, uh, the Chromecast says, oh, hey, I must be on vacation. So it disconnects. And within five seconds, no joke, it will put up its um, insecure one-time password or one-time uh, setup network. So the attacker just connects to it, reconfigures it to um, connect out to Rickroll. That's pretty much how everything works, right? So the, the whole setup is very simple. You just have to find some way to um, uh, do a denial of service attack on the Chromecast. The deauthenticate is the easiest way. I think it actually, in testing, it seems like it actually throws up the Wi-Fi, the uh, set up Wi-Fi, if it can't connect out to the internet. So if you like were to snip the internet line outside the person's house, then that would work too. But that's way harder. So another problem with this is that it has a matter of persistence, right? So if you were like, in, uh, if your neighbor has a Chromecast and you tell it to connect to your home Wi-Fi, then your home Wi-Fi is always going to be there. And the only way to reconfigure the thing is to connect to your home Wi-Fi and bring it down. Like, there'd be no way for your neighbor who owns the Chromecast to change that. Like once it's, set, once it's connected to your home Wi-Fi, now it's your Chromecast. As, as, <laughs> like, especially if um, they don't, like, know, like if they're not like a techie, right? Like they could take it outside of range of your Wi-Fi network, and then it would so put its uh, connection back up. But they wouldn't know that. They would just be like, Chromecast stupid thing's not working anymore. <laughs> so as long as your attacker network exists, it should just stay connected to it and think everything's totally fine. Um, so a very long rickroll you could do. <laughs> um, so remediation is kind of difficult in this case because it's actually not just a vacation issue. There's also just a connectivity issue, right? Like, what if the Wi-Fi goes down? What if you just get, buy a new router? Right? Then you have to be able to reconfigure the Chromecast to use your new router. Um, so it's almost the way that the thing has to work. And so I was kind of bummed out for quite a, way, uh, for quite a while after I discovered this, thinking that they might not be able to fix this. Like you might need a hardware um, device. Um, but I thought of something. So um, I think uh, two suggestions might be that you require physical access to the device to um, put up the one-time insecure password. Or, I keep saying password, the one-time insecure network. Um, so that might require like power on, so that way the device will only put up its insecure network the first time it powers on. So like that'll be in the boot like checkup, or maybe only after you press the one button that it has, it'll do that. Because um, otherwise, like anybody could just drive up and force the network up. Um, all right, so that that's about it. I have a big thanks to uh, Drew um, the, in the audience because um, he helped me out a whole lot out with um, uh, doing the. Uh, Wi-Fi stuff in here. The Phoenix 2600, um, if you guys are ever in the area, um, come and uh, chill with us. We meet at the first Fridays of the month. And my wife, Alicia, for unwavering tolerance to my total shenanigans. Way too much Rick rolling. Um, and then, yeah, questions. Have you found a way, if you're able to, hacking per se, but I've used this thing off and on in travel a lot. And you know how they have those, um, 
got the trip like a portal you have to put it in your code yeah it doesn't work with those yeah that's a known problem with the oh, I'll, I'll repeat i'll repeat the question again so um the question is like can you use the chromecast um like in a typical hotel wi-fi network with a captive portal sort of like do mac filtering and make you go through like a thing right um the answer is that there's no good way to do that with the chromecast because it doesn't have like a web interface that you could the you could if you i mean we're hackers right we could do it you could like spoof the mac address of your chromecast with your with your uh, laptop and then go through the captive portal and now the mac address will be whitelisted of your chromecast now the chromecast can get online that's like so much work to try to do that so you could totally do it that way but that's a known problem like with with how it, it works one more question yeah. do you know any other apps you can run on the damn thing other than um, youtube and uh, yeah do you know how to Netflix? yeah can you can you play more videos than youtube and netflix yeah you can do like streaming there are there are yeah, there's ways i think there's been some who, uh, yeah, you can play music, you can do um, uh, streaming from a tab, like in, Chrome, uh, in Chromium, the browser. You can stream like the, I don't know how it does that actually. It does like some low level frame buffer grabbing or something and like throws it out to the, um, out to the network. Yeah, yeah, so the, yeah, so the, the functionality may be um, uh, lessened. I th think we had a question in the middle. Yeah, the, so the question is like, um, uh, there's only one button on the thing, like in terms of remediation. So, um, like, what does that button do? I guess is a way of paraphrasing that. Yeah, I think that there's a factory reset involved with the reset button. Um, I haven't done that. Um, I'm pretty positive that if you were to like have it unplugged now, and if I were to like hold down the button for 10 seconds, it does a factory reset. Um, the, it doesn't do a whole lot. It probably just keeps like a small bit of like what networks you've remembered in like some slightly non-volatile memory and wipe out that memory. Um, so we wouldn't do a whole factory reset, but I just forget what um, networks you're associated with. So that? Yeah, so in, in the case of the, pers this, the persistence problem, yeah, you might be able to get your, your Chromecast back by holding down the device. I'm not 100% sure about the factory reset thing, so, because um, I, haven't, I haven't actually done that. Uh, Question? Yeah, the question is about like, well, but the vacation then coming back. Um, yeah, the the device will remember more than one network. Um, I don't know how it does multiple networks. Like, if if it's been on both you and your neighbor's network, like, how does it choose which one? Maybe it's based off the of signal strength. I don't know, but it definitely remembers more than one um, because that came up in testing where we'd have to make it connect to um, uh, an attacker network, but then once you connect it to that SSID and MAC address, it'll just remember it and it'll just connect to my attacker's network, which is like really annoying. Um, so we have to like keep on changing our SSID of the of the attacker network. And it will show the SSID of the network in the bottom. Yeah. So when you're in the when you're in the web interface, so like to, to figure out what uh, networks you're connected to, it'll tell you which ones are like remembered. I think. But when it's idle, it'll show which network it's connected to. Yeah. 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 So the person will see that it's connected to your network. Like, yeah. You should. Yeah. The, the the person who's being attacked should should be able to see like. This is an attacker SSID or something like that. I don't know if that's too much help for you, especially if you're a non-technical person, right? I mean, I'm sure we all could handle that problem, but the typical person, perhaps, maybe not. Any other questions? In the back. The what? What the the music video? Oh no! Yeah. See, this is. A, I th I've thought really long and hard about whether I should actually rickroll you all, um, and I. <laughs> I decided against it. You all, you should have been very afraid about midway through um, the presentation where I played a video, and this is a video, this is a talk about Rick Rolling. So, um, all right, I am out of time. So uh, that's about it. Thank you very much.